The U.S. is insisting that this time around will be nothing like Iraq or Serbia or Libya. Washington is confident that when it comes to Syria, the evidence is unquestionable, just like it was when Saddam was accused of hiding weapons of mass destruction. Here's RT's Ganesh Jikan on America's record of military missteps. Before every U.S. intervention in the last 15 years, there was a hype of lies, misinformation and discrepancies. But every time Washington would present its case for war as the ultimate truth, leading people to believe that waging war was the only way to peace. As the U.S. is preparing an attack on Syria, striking similarities can be found in how Washington makes its case for intervention. The material I will present to you comes from a variety of sources. Some are U.S. sources and some are those of other countries. We have additional information about this attack, and that information is being compiled and reviewed together with our partners, and we will provide that information in the days ahead. Some of the sources are technical, such as intercepted telephone conversations and photos taken by satellites. What have we learned about the actual proof the White House claims it has on Syria's use of chemical weapons? Yeah, well, if a U.S. official is telling me that this intelligence assessment contains forensic evidence that an actual chemical attack took place, as well as some intercepted communications among Syrian forces that suggest the regime was responsible. A separate source is also telling CNN's John King that the report contains some satellite images of activity at potentially chemical weapons depots. Back in 2003, in the run-up to the Iraq war, the media also diligently repeated what the White House said. We know that Iraq and al-Qaeda have had high-level contacts that go back a decade. We've learned that Iraq has trained al-Qaeda members in bomb-making and poisons and deadly gases. Before the U.S. stepped in came Washington's claims that the government, which was about to be attacked, did not cooperate, thus discrediting any U.N. investigation that was underway. Saddam Hussein and his regime are busy doing all they possibly can to ensure that inspectors succeed in finding absolutely nothing. Well, they found nothing because there was nothing. But it was an argument that couldn't be heard through the deafening sound of war drums. Iraq is not the only example when the U.S. effectively rendered a diplomatic solution obsolete. The Serbian leaders, on the other hand, refused even to discuss key elements of the peace agreement. Before the U.S. started a two-month-long bombing campaign of the former Yugoslavia, the Yugoslav government had accepted proposals for the near independence of Kosovo within the Republic of Serbia, as well as an international peacekeeping force in Kosovo. But the agreement that NATO put forward had a clause that they could not accept. In the words of former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, the Rambouillet Rambouille text, which called on Serbia to admit NATO troops throughout Yugoslavia, was a provocation, an excuse to start bombing. Rambouillet Rambouille is not a document that an angelic Serb could have accepted. Years later, we see diplomacy brushed off again in Syria, even as the UN team is working on the ground. At every turn, the Syrian regime has failed to cooperate with the UN investigation. Washington has bypassed the UN both in the case of the former Yugoslavia and that of Iraq. In Libya, the US and its allies have effectively carried out a regime change, although the UN mandate was to protect civilians. We came, we saw, he died. <laughs> because we acted quickly, a humanitarian catastrophe has been avoided. But for many Libyans, a humanitarian catastrophe has just started as the nation plunges deeper into chaos and terror, like in Iraq, where the intervention was followed by a decade of terror. For those wondering what awaits American politicians found to have lied? No weapons over there. <laughs> Maybe under here. Ganich Chekhan, RT, Washington, D.C.